Hey guys, how's it going? Today I've got an interesting quick look at this rare AMD E9173 graphics card. This is part of the Radon Embedded range and it's originally made for thin client PCs from Dell or HP. They're not usually available to buy from any manufacturers, so you won't see any of these cards from ASUS, Sapphire or Gigabyte. I was able to get this card by itself from Taobao in China. If you don't know, Taobao is like Amazon in China and it cost me around 300 RMB and that converts to around 45 US dollars. As you can see, this is a half height PCI Express card. It's a single slot card and it also needs a, uh, a times eight slot. The main reason why I bought it is because it's half height and it's also single slot. I wanted to use this to upgrade an Intel based PC that I had and it only has uh, half height slots. That usually limits the options a lot. The best half height slots right now are based on either the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti or the Neo GTX 1650. Both of these NVIDIA options can be quite expensive and they can cost a lot more than $100, 100 US dollars and that's pretty much out of the budget for my little project. I didn't want to buy something like a GT 1030 either because for that price they're pretty shit and it's not much better than your integrated graphics that you have on the CPU. All of these cards that I mentioned, they don't need an additional PCI Express power connector and they can take all the power from the slot. The best feature of this card is the amount of outputs it has. There's two mini display port ports and there's one full size port. All of them do 4K each. I've used this card with three 1080p monitors and it works perfectly fine in that setup. It also works on my 1440p monitor when running at 165Hz. I'm not sure how well pushing all three inputs at 4K would be because we've only got two gigabytes of video memory. That might be an issue, especially if you're doing something like graphic design or video editing in Premiere, Illustrator, Photoshop, After Effects. These kind of apps are really gonna hammer your GPU memory. This card is by no means a gaming powerhouse, but it's definitely not shit. I think the card is comparable to an RX 550. It's not going to be as good as a full 550 because with those cards you usually have them in dual slot format and they've got quite large coolers. And also the memory bandwidth has been cut down a bit. Still I think it's going to be a bit better than a GT 1030 from Nvidia. I think this card can do 60fps, 1080p in games like League of Legends, Fortnite, Rocket League. More complicated games are going to run at 30fps and I've got some benchmarks over here. It's not really going to match the top end half height cards though, like the 1050 Ti and the 1650 I mentioned earlier. They're going to be really fast and probably suitable for 1440p at 60fps. These are going to be really expensive though. Something I need to mention about this card is the video encoder. So it has the same video encoder as the RX 480 or the uh, RX 580. So it's possible to use this in a dual PC streaming setup to get some reasonable results. You can send the NDI uh, feed over or use a capture card and then use this card to encode and uh, send it to Twitch. You'll be able to offload all of the encoding tasks onto the graphics card and it won't be too bad at 4000 to 5000 kilobits per second bitrate. Actually the project that I was working on is this, uh, this exact use case. So I have an old i7 setup with this graphics card and I can stream around 720p at 60fps and or record at 1080p at 60fps uh, at the same time and it's working fine. But it's not impacting my main gaming PC either because I'm just sending all of the, the video over using NDI. I think if you get hold of one of these cards they aren't bad at all for the price. Especially as the half height market is so inflated, you've got the 1650 at like over 100, 150 US dollars and then you've got the 1050 at around 100. There's some rumours that NVIDIA might actually come out of a 1650 card which is half height but have the Turing video encoder so that would be really good. I probably want to jump on that if it's not too expensive but I've got a feeling it's going to be like 200 US. I would mainly recommend this card, this AMD card for budget builds where you need something that's half height but you might also need to use the other slot in the, in the machine as well. So if you've got one of those um, Dell or HP machines on the second hand market um, those really cheap ones that are usually budget gaming builds, you might want to put one of these cards in. The best way to find one of these cards is probably on eBay, AliExpress, Taobao, uh, but I think they're quite rare. The drivers on the AMD website 
uh, do work, but they are slightly different compared to your main, uh, the mainline radon drivers, and they can sometimes be behind one or two versions. So that's about it. Thanks for watching, and don't hesitate to drop any questions in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.